Yeah, no worries. Um, Simon, Zach, too, he was saying yesterday it was like the finals have come early a bit. Does it have that sort of feel for Melbourne? Yeah, it certainly does. I think when you know, we played Geelong, um, the games over the last few years have been incredibly tight and once again it's you know, 1v2 on the ladder. So it's exciting. Um, it feels like a final. Um, our players are looking forward to it. There's a lot of excitement around the group and a lot of energy this week. So uh, we can't wait for the, for the challenge ahead. It's uh, no bigger challenge to head down to Geelong and play uh, them down on their home ground and we're looking forward to it. You've beaten them the last three times and, and including down there at Geelong. Does that give you much confidence for this game? I think both teams have a lot of belief in their method and how they go about it and generally the games come down to who can sustain their method for longer and um, you know the last few times we've played we've, we've delivered some enormous belief to our playing group about what's possible and um, we'll go after the game the way that we want it to look so um, both teams have unbelievable um, you know, belief in their method, but it does come down to the team that, that executes that for longer. But just on that message to Clint here, mate, um, in terms of belief, that prelim final last year and how it's set up grand final day, just speak to that if you can and, and how important that was. Yeah, I think even you know, if you go back a step further to the round 23 game, um, you know, as we're headed towards finals, our, the belief grew in our ability to execute over a long period of time. And um, you know, we had enormous momentum heading into that final series. We had enormous momentum heading into the, the preliminary finals. So um, I think what it showed to us is that we need to be at our best. We need to execute well within our method. And um, you know, that's what Geelong demand from you. They demand for you to be at your best. And we're going to need to be that tomorrow night. And does that include uh, Maxi? Like he was the star of the show on prelim final night last year. Yeah, Maxi will be back, and and Jacko will be back. So get the both rucks back into the team. It's uh, you know we certainly missed them last week in terms of our ability to execute um, in that phase of the game. So to get those aerial presence back into our footy team will be great. Woody, are they are they both hundred percent, or do you have to manage them through the game at all? I uh, wouldn't play them, Katie, if they weren't 100%. Um, so they're ready to go. Um, both guys were really touch and go to get up for last week. You know, Max had an incredibly strong session on Saturday in Adelaide and, and Jack was very similar back in Melbourne. So um, they're itching to get out there and play. Um, they're a big part of our footy team and to get them both back at once is really exciting. Having just recently had a 1v2 clash against the Lions, it's sort of feel like, you know, um, you know, it's a good prep for the fellas heading into the home stretch, but do you sort of almost feel like, you know, the, the real business end of the season has arrived? I think it's you know, just a part of our season that you know, these are the opportunities that you look forward to to play against some really high quality footy teams and no doubt Brisbane were one of those a few weeks ago and once again we get a great challenge again down in Geelong and um, we look forward to these challenges because you get a great audit on your game, you get a great audit where you sit as a footy club and um, you know, we'll certainly get that tomorrow night, we'll, we'll get a good look at where we sit, how we're tracking and, and where we need to improve. Was it sort of hard to assess Geelong's performance given, I guess, you know, with no, no disrespect to North Melbourne, but it wasn't the strongest quality opposition, I guess, last week? Oh, I don't think you can assess Geelong on one week of footy. Um, you assess Geelong over the last 10 years. Um, they're a very strong footy club and, uh, you know, they've been really strong in their method over a long period of time and they've got unbelievable strengths that have shone through for a large period of time so once again this year they're playing in a way that's really hard to play against and um, they'll challenge us in a whole range of different areas and and we're looking forward to that i guess it's um you know from my point of view i guess sorry our point of view you got the one of the best defensive duos in main lead up against one of the best forward duos in Hawkins and Cameron. Is that how you see it? Is that sort of a, an aspect of the game you're looking forward to? Oh, it's exciting. You know, as a pure footy fan, if you go into the game and you look across the ground and you see some of the, the battles that are going to take place in a 1v2 clash, you know, you look at you know, the quality of a Hawkins and a Cameron v May and Lever, then you, you move up into the midfield um, and you've got Petrarca and Oliver versus Selwood, Dangerfield, you know, Viney. You know, it's just, you know, all over the ground there's great duels and that's what you get in these big type of clashes and, um, you know, it's, it's exciting for the footy purists and I'm one of those and I'm looking forward to it. And I guess, um, you know, still um, talking about John's forward line, uh, Tyson Stengel being an absolute revelation this year. Um, 
how much sort of work have you put into him this week? I'm sure you don't like to individualise too much with uh, the opposition, but um, he seems like he's going to be a pretty important player to stop as well. Yeah, look, it's a, it's a different mix for them in their forward half this year with the inclusion of, of Tyson. You know, he's in some great form. Um, and, you know, we're certainly going to have a player that's going to certainly keep a really close eye on him. Um, he's a dangerous small forward. He impacts games and he's hitting the scoreboard and, um, you know, he's added a new dimension to their forward half of the game. But he obviously, there's so much uh, going right in your group at the moment, but the, the one area there has been some external commentary on is the functioning of the forward line. Um, how do you see that at the moment? Oh, I think there's a little bit of a lag effect. Um, in people looking at what our forward half's doing. You know, we've had 60 shots at goal in the last two weeks and we had 35 shots against uh, you know, the side that was sitting second on the ladder. So um, you know, we've made some adjustments. We feel like our forward half of the ground is you know, operating at a pretty high level at the moment. Um, it's something we'll continually watch um, because it's an area of our ground that we need to continue to improve in. But we feel like it's operating to a pretty good level in the last couple of weeks, and hopefully you know, we'll, we'll test that, that out again um, against a real high-quality defence tomorrow night. Hey, Goody, where to for um, Sam Wiedemann, uh, given he's done a, you did a grunt of power at work uh, last Saturday night. Um, where's he at the moment? Uh, he's, a, he's an improving player. Um, he's no different to a lot of our players in our list. He's, you know, he, he did a, a, an absolutely amazing job for us you know, in the ruck last week in terms of uh, leading our ruck division. Um, and he's improving as a forward. So um, his opportunities will continue to come. Um, but he's a much improved player and um, he'll just continue to develop in the player that we want. And just on Petrarca, Simon, how pleasing was it to sort of see him at that um, Goal kicking boot is um, game last week, probably the one area that maybe has been a little bit down, but had three goals, I guess. And um, is that something you want to sort of see from him a bit more going forward into the business end of the year? Oh, look, we don't talk to Christian about his impact on scoreboard. Um, what I've been really pleased with Christian is his ability to impact in contest areas and um, make unbelievable decisions both offensively and defensively around that phase of the game. And uh, what I've seen with Christian the last two weeks especially is his dynamic nature has come back, his energy is back in his game and um, you know, he's becoming a really dynamic contest-based player, especially ahead of the ball. So, um, that's what we love about Christian. Um, he brings a real spark to our team and, and the scoreboard and the impact will come. I mean, obviously, uh, this game is so important for, for those positions at the top of the ladder. How, how important is the top two specifically this year, given you've got two non-Victorian sides lingering around that top four as well? Uh, it's, it's way too early to, to look at that right now. Um, our focus is just playing our best footy, continuing to improve and finish as high up the ladder as we can. Um, I don't look at who's in the top four, who's in and around the top four, um, other than focusing on Melbourne Footy Club and where we can play our best footy. So there's still so much footy to be played and it's uh, way too early to be looking that far ahead. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, guys.